Hello guys, in this video, we are going to discuss the principle behind the working of microwave oven. So let us begin. Before actually diving deep into the topic of microwave oven, let us first discuss that what are microwaves. Well, microwaves are a form of non-ionizing electromagnetic radiation whose wavelengths ranges from 0 0.03 centimeters to 30 centimeters. As you can see from this diagram also, like uh, we are having a lot of electromagnetic radiations over here, ranging from gamma ray, x-ray, ultraviolet, visible, infrared, then microwave and at last radio waves. So you can also say that microwaves are basically radio waves but of very lesser wavelengths. Here the wavelength is given as 10 to the power minus 1 meters which is 0.1 meter or, or you can say 10 centimeters. But when you consider the range, then it will roughly ranges from 0 0.03 centimeters to 30 centimeters. Now, another important point to consider here that the microwaves that cook food that we are going to use inside the microwave oven are about 12 centimeters long. That is the wavelength of that microwaves, which we're going to use inside the microwave oven are about 12 centimeters. Now, the second question that needs to be answered, why are microwaves chosen to be used for cooking. Why not other waves? Like we are having so many other like gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet rays, visible, infrared, radio waves, all those waves, but we are only interested in the microwaves. So why is it? Well, because microwaves have three important characteristics that allow them to be used in cooking. The first one is they are reflected by metals. This is very important point. See, uh, when you have a microwave oven, like this, then if you go within the food compartment, then the interior of that food compartment is basically made up of none other than metals. And why is it so? Because of this property of microwave that it gets reflected by metals. So when you just bombard the microwave over here, then it will get reflected by the metals continuously. The second point is they pass through glass, paper, plastic and similar materials. Similarly, when you just have a container on which you are going to place your food within this food chamber inside the microwave oven, then that container must be of either glass or plastic or any other materials. And the property of the microwave is that it will just pass through those materials without losing any energy. The third thing is like they're absorbed by foods. So after it gets passed through the container on which the food is kept, it will just directly get absorbed by the foods. So either it will get reflected by the metals continuously and ultimately reaches to the food or it will just pass through the material on which the food is kept and then it reaches the food. So these three are very important points and that's why the microwaves are chosen to be used for cooking. Now, how are microwaves formed inside the oven? It's okay that microwaves are very good for cooking, but how are these microwaves basically formed inside the oven? Well. Microwaves are made by an equipment fitted inside the oven called magnetron. Here is it. This one is the magnetron, which basically makes the microwave. And after this microwaves are basically made, it will just pass through this channel called waveguide. And then with the help of this stirrer, it will just insert it into this food compartment. And after that, it gets reflected by the metals or it gets passed directly from the container in which the food is kept and then gets absorbed by the food. And this magnetron is basically behind the control and instrument panel within the oven and is generally cooled with the help of fins fitted to it. Because when this magnetron forms the microwave, then it gets heated. And for that heat to dissipate, this instrument is having a fin attached to it. But the question is like, how does a magnetron make microwaves okay we know that magnetron makes microwave but how the question is how so let us see it very clearly well magnetron is having an arrangement like this shown over here and at the center of it like this one is basically cathode heated cathode you can say a solid metal rod which is heated actually and that is at the center of magnetron why heated because this heated cathode easily emit electrons now after that we are having this ring shaped anode surrounding the cathode and this is basically the anode anode of that magnetron and we are having this 
cavities made within this anode and i will tell you the significance of it now the third point is electrons would boil off from the cathode as i said that this cathode is heated basically to emit the electrons so electrons would boil off from the cathode and zip across to the anode in straight lines see we know that this cathode is having negative charge and this anode is having positive charge so when this cathode will emit electrons then it will directly go to the anode because of the force of attraction from the anode because positive charge attracts the negative charge and electron is negative but this anode is positive so the electron just get attracted towards the anode and since there are no other forces hindering the path of electron that's why this electron will directly go to the anode following a straight line here shown as an arrow in blue color so this arrow is perfectly straight but now another point to note is that there are two added extra bits in a magnetron that change things completely and what are those two things first the anode has holes or slots cut into it called cavities or resonating cavities as i've already told these are cavities within the anode these are basically resonating cavities and i'll tell you the significance of it second there is a powerful magnet permanent magnet underneath the anode within the anode we are having powerful magnet okay which basically generates the magnetic field actually that is what the work of magnet is but what will be the direction of this magnetic field well the direction of this magnetic field is such that it goes inside the computer like into the computer like this fashion cross this is actually the convention of writing when the direction of any vector is inside this computer inside this laptop as you are seeing it or you can say inside the screen along the length of the tube that is parallel to the cathode and in this diagram going directly into the screen that's what the direction of magnetic field will be now we already know that if there is a presence of magnetic field then a force will act on any charged particle here electron and that force is known as lorentz force and that is given by q v cross b this is a vector and this is basically the charge here in case of electron we will have minus of e and this is velocity and this is magnetic field strength just say magnetic field strength and the unit is tesla so if suppose that there is no any magnetic field then the electron would directly go from cathode to anode via a straight line as shown here with the blue arrow but here is the presence of magnetic field so this electron will experience a force and that force will be given by this lorentz force so when you just have uh, the direction of this velocity is what well if i write then this q will be minus of e v is j cap that is positive y axis cross b is minus of k cap that is going into the screen and i am letting that as negative of z axis so this negative negative will be plus and this j cross k will be i cap so i cap is in this direction that's why you are seeing over here that electron is going in this direction this this and this the red one so it is basically due to the presence of magnetic field that the electron will take this kind of trajectory otherwise it would have been just gone straight to the anode but because of this lorentz force it is following this trajectory and if you suppose this to be perfect circle then you can even find out the radius of this circle too uh this f is equal to if i talk about only magnitude this f is equal to e v and b if it follows a perfect circle then this f is nothing but given by the centripetal force to have this electron in a complete circle we need a centripetal force and that centripetal force must be equal to the lorentz force so this velocity velocity got cancelled out and from here we can say that this radius of that circle will be equal to mv by ev so here is an important point to note that if that electron follows a complete circle then that radius will be mass of that electron multiplied by velocity of that electron upon the charge on that electron multiplied by the magnetic field strength in which that electron is there now the next point like now when the electrons try to zip from cathode this cathode 
to this anode okay we already know that this is a node and this is cathode so when electrons try to zip from cathode to anode they are traveling through an electric field stretching between the anode and cathode and a magnetic field produced by the magnet at the same time i have already discussed so like any electrically charged particles moving in a magnetic field they feel a force and follow a curved path instead of a straight one whizzing around the space between the anode and the cathode i have already discussed this and i have also calculated the radius now the sixth point as the electrons nip past the cavities suppose like this past the cavities like this you can say or like this you can say it can follow any curvature depending upon so many factors like the magnetic field strength the speed at which the cathode is throwing the electrons all those things so as the electrons nip past the cavities the cavities basically resonate and emit microwave radiation this is how the microwave radiation is basically generated because as this electrons nip past the cavities then this cavities resonate and emit microwave radiation you can think of the electrons passing energy to the cavities like this electrons nipping through the cavities will pass the energy to the cavities and these energies will basically resonate in a particular manner and that's how it emits the microwave radiation it's like someone blowing on the open end of a fluid only producing microwaves instead of sound waves so this is how basically magnetron make microwaves and this microwave radiation that the cavities produce is collected up and channeled by a kind of funnel called a wave guide into the cooking compartment of a microwave oven and that also i have already discussed see this magnetron makes up this microwave radiation and this radiation will then pass through this wave guide and then this steroid will throw these microwaves into the food compartment now up to here it's perfectly okay that we are having microwaves radiation with us but how these microwaves basically heats up the food that's the important question so this basically microwave heating is largely caused by the changing electric and magnetic fields and that is the microwaves which are emitted by magnetron through a channel called a wave guide because this microwave is a kind of radiation electromagnetic radiation and what are electromagnetic radiations well they are changing electric and magnetic fields both are perpendicular to each other the electric and the magnetic fields so these microwaves are none other than any other electromagnetic radiation in this regard and we are having food that sits on a turn table basically the container on which the food is kept is a kind of rotating one and why it needs to be rotating well because to cook the food evenly we need to have that container always rotating slowly then the microwaves bounce back and forth of the reflective metal wall i have already discussed that is the property of microwave to reflect from the metal walls and microwave oven walls are metallic so the microwaves bounce back and forth of the reflective metal walls of the food compartment and when the microwaves reach the food itself it gets absorbed by the food or say it penetrates inside the food so if i am having this as a food and this is microwave then this microwave basically penetrates the food penetrates inside the food and these penetrating microwaves affects polar molecules based on the strength of electric dipoles they have so here is something very interesting going on like this microwave is basically the changing electric and magnetic fields and when this microwave penetrates the food then it searches for the polar molecules or you can say that polar molecules are only get affected by these microwaves and what are polar molecules well polar molecules are the one which are having dipoles or you can say that positive and the negative ends one end is positive and other end is negative of same magnitude like say q then here also q so the magnitude of these charges must be same plus q and minus q and the distance between them say x so this is known as a dipole so polar molecules are having dipoles so for microwaves to affect the food or to heat the food the food must contain the polar molecules but how it affects the polar molecules well well microwaves are having changing electric and magnetic fields and these electric and magnetic fields basically flips in a microwave like suppose i am saying that this is positive and this is negative of microwave itself then after some time this end will become positive and this end will become negative then after some time this end will become negative and this end will become positive and this thing goes on and on because these microwaves basically 
changes the electric and magnetic fields so how the electric fields are changed well electric fields are changed only when the charge will change and in the presence of this microwave when the polar molecules come then this polar molecules also possess some charge as i have discussed like dipole dipole strength so when the charge of the microwave changes because of the changing electric fields then this dipole because of the force between the charges also changes its position so in this case when i am saying like suppose we are having negative over here and positive over here then dipole must be having negative over here and positive over here so that unlike charges will attract each other and when this changes to plus this changes to minus then the dipole also must be changing to here minus and here plus so dipoles also must flip like rotate as the microwave rotates in order to align itself with the force of attraction from the microwave or we can also say that dipole movement basically started to act on these polar molecules having dipole strength as a result of the changing electric and magnetic fields of the microwave basically it all happens because of the coulomb's force of attraction between the charges coulomb's force of attraction between the charges so it's like the one end of microwave is negative then it will attract the positive end of dipole or polar molecules and the other end of the microwave is positive so it will attract the negative end of the polar molecule and when microwave change its electric field then polar molecules must also flip to align in the direction of microwave and in the course of action the dipole moment will act on these polar molecules but this flipping of polar molecules as a result of changing microwave but this flipping of polar molecules as a result of changing electric and magnetic fields of microwaves depends upon the strength of electric dipoles if the strength of electric dipoles will be stronger then this flipping will be more stronger and if it is weaker then this flipping will be weaker so that's what written over here like as the direction of the electric field changes over time the polar molecules attempt to follow the field by changing their own orientation inside the material in order to line up along the field lines in an energetically favorable configuration that is with the positive side pointing in the same direction as the field lines and if the direction of that field quickly flips these dipoles get kinetic energy so i'm saying that if this flipping occurs very frequently then obviously it is going to generate the kinetic energy within the molecules and as kinetic energy of these group of molecules increases then it means that temperature is also increased why because kinetic energy is proportional to the temperature and this whole process is known as dielectric heating by which microwave oven heats up the food so this is basically how the microwave heating takes place with the help of dielectric heating and any material containing significant strength of electric dipole will heat in a microwave like for example food containing water molecules why because water molecules are also polar molecule one end is positive and other end is negative so this is also a polar molecule water molecules are also polar molecules so if i am saying that any food is kept within the microwave oven and that food is not containing any material any molecule which are having electric dipole or i can say that if the food within the microwave oven does not contain any molecule which is polar then that microwave is not going to heat that food so for food to be heated inside the microwave oven that food must contain polar molecules either in the form of water or any other form now here are some important points to consider in case of microwave heating in oven the first one is exactly how the food cooks in a microwave depends mostly on what it's made from if it is made up of molecules or if it is containing molecules having higher strength of electric dipole then it is going to cook very nicely if it is made up of polar molecules having strong dipole strength and that molecules are evenly spread within the food then that food will going to be cooked very nicely as is evident from our discussion that microwaves excites the polar molecules having more electric dipole strength strongly than the one having lesser electric dipole strength that's why a fruit pie having more water content at the center is boiling hot inside while the outside crust is barely even warm as i have told that suppose this is a fruit pie and the center of the fruit pie are having more polar molecules 
in the form of water over here so these polar molecules will flip more frequently in the presence of microwave because of the changing electric fields and because of that the center of this fruit pie will get heated more but the outside crust of this fruit pie are not having that much polar molecules or water content and that's why it's not going to flip randomly in the presence of microwave and that's why it does not get heated much and which results in comparatively very lesser warm in comparison to the center of this fruit pie another important factor to consider is the size and shape of what's being cooked inside the oven because microwaves can't penetrate more than a centimeter or two into the food they are losing energy from the moment they enter the food and after that first centimeter or so they don't have enough energy left to penetrate any deeper heat is then conducted towards the inner part of the food from its outer part of course some of the heat absorbed by the outer surface of the food is lost to the air in the oven by convection what it is saying that suppose this is a food and microwave is coming from here so as like any other electromagnetic radiation this microwave also contains some energy and when it gets penetrated inside the food then this energy is getting expanded as it gets into the food and as it heats the food so generally it gets into the food for about a centimeter or two so this is one centimeter or you can say two centimeter but what happens after that so the microwaves only reach the food up to one or two centimeter but what happens to this part of the food well it is here that conduction plays the role well after the food gets heated up to one centimeter or two centimeter then this heat is further passed on to the core of the food by the process of conduction because the inner part is in direct contact with the outer part so heat is being passed to the inner part by the process of conduction heat transfer and in the process some of the heat are also lost to the air in the oven because of the process of convection heat transfer because this is at a temperature greater than the temperature of air in the oven and that's why heat is basically transferred from the higher temperature to the lower temperature in the air in the oven by the process of convection heat transfer so this is all about this video guys and in the next video we are going to discuss about the efficiency of microwave ovens and are these microwave ovens even safe to operate so till then thank you